she darkens the contours of her brows with charcoal and between them draws with sindoor a voluptuous dawn. She outlines her eyes with soot wiped from the rim of a silver lamp and just like that, as a ray hits the top corner of her reflection, she sees him surfing on her black curls. She had met him on the banks of the Brahmoputro while selling baskets knit from bamboo fibre. His petite frame and hazel eyes mask the arrogance he devoured from robbing the river of her Zari border. Her hair had been his ocean and his incessant riding had begun knotting them into a violent vortex which swallowed him three years later. She irons out the curls with her fingers and dabs some yellowing butter on her lips. She tosses the set of copo pool rice like dice, the earrings land on the jonbiri. When she lifts the neck piece, the orchids swing on the crescent. She slides her wrist into the dhanchira and as she brings her middle finger to the gold plated lark ring, she jerks away from its mouth. Her forehead breaks into a quivering bead, just like her body had when she decided to run into the mountains. She had opened her eyes which stared into a pair of buoyant exclamations. With her fattening belly, the peak swelled with snow. She feared his Judima-laden breath would find its way into her womb through her erect navel. After the moon vanished, she nursed its bruises inflected by teeth on her fingers. His insatiable desire to suckle at her gorged breast set a deluge of milk that froze on leaving her nipples and formed his grave. A shriveled umbilical cord formed the wreath. She unfolds the Muga Sari and holds it against the sun. The gold tin turns her into a goddess for a few moments. She drapes her body and smiles at the embellished pallu. She ties her hair in a low bun and thrusts a half moon in it. She takes a second look at serenity and sticks her tongue out. She lifts the pallu and kisses the motifs in which she's woven generous men. Her pile tinkle as she walks to the wedding.